Hi, and welcome back to the Impact Lounge. I'm Tonight, I'm the host, Adam, and I'm going to be joined by Carl in a minute. But more importantly, we're going to be joined by Ortiz of LAX. Uh, looking forward to that one. But just before we start, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, do make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, we love to hear your comments. So if you listen to us on whatever medium it is, whether it's on Podbean or whatever, get in touch with us. Either do that through our social media, or if you listen to us on YouTube, there's a comment section down there. We usually read out. The, the best comments each week on our weekly show although it's been a bit touch and go over the Christmas period but it will be coming back very very soon so make sure you check out all the content on the channel hit the subscribe and in a few minutes I'm going to be back with Ortiz but before I do that I've got some breaking news uh, we've just been told that this Sunday in the UK we're going to have the television premiere the worldwide television premiere so free to air don't have to pay for it i know you can pay for it on pay-per-view etc or legal streams but the first worldwide debut of uh, premiere of homecoming will be on the fight network uk this sunday at 9 p.m uh, if you're in the uk you can get that on sky channel 192 or on freesat 161 so uh brilliant the impact is continuing to support its uk fans make sure you check it out uh, i've seen it already i was one of those people who who did stay up and pay for it and uh, it's a real treat so make sure all, all, all the pay-per-views last well we're in a new year now but last year this year have been fantastic so do make sure sunday night you're in front of your television catch that so we're going to just take a quick break and when i come back i'll be joined by carl and uh more importantly than carl obviously ortiz see you in a sec Orgullosamente Latino hasta la muerte y después Worldwide Latino Pride The Ambassadors of Violence LAX, K-Dog, The Notorious 187 Homicide Bang, da, 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 bang, no, no, absolute pleasure. And, and don't worry, we'll be hassling you from now on now that we have your phone number to come back on the show. But that's that's another story. <laughs> so where, where are you finding yourself tonight? Where are you? You still down in uh, Tennessee? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm in New York for, for just today. And then tomorrow we fly out to uh, Mexico City oh. to do uh, tapings. Back to the pizza, back to the bagels, the chopped cheese, everything. Oh, yeah, you already know, man, 100%. I yeah. actually, when I came back from Tennessee, I got, the first thing I got was a chopped cheese. You so, got it, man, of yeah. course. I mean, I'm from Long Island, so there isn't too much chopped cheese going around, but, uh, you know, the pizza and bagel scene is, is it's on point around here. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I'm in Harlem, so that's like the chopped cheese capital. Can, can we explain <laughs> to our United Kingdom friend here what exactly a chopped cheese is? Because I'm willing to bet he has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> So it's uh, you usually get it at like a bodega or like a, a corner store, a deli, and um, it's just uh, it's it's a cheeseburger essentially, but it's chopped up. It's 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 uh, ground beef chopped up on a hero with like cheese. It could be American, Swiss, whatever you like, like mayonnaise, and it's essentially a, a hamburger or a cheeseburger on a hero. And that's pretty much what it is. It's like our version of the Philly cheesesteak. Now, could you shout out the official LAX bodega of choice, like where you guys go? Because I know Haji's, I know all the famous spots. But where, does, <laughs> where does LAX roll up for their chopped cheese? Uh, uh, I don't know the official spot. I mean, for me, it, it's called Jose's. He's trying to get a free one next time he goes in by nah, saying, Nah, nah, oh. I need to know, man. The life of LAX, I need to know how they roll in the streets, man. <laughs> well, look, we've only got tw- we've only got twenty minutes tonight, and although I love chopped meats and cheese, and I'm actually going to be thinking about that while I sleep tonight, uh, <laughs> I think our listeners, uh, I'm sure they do want to hear about food stuff, but uh, oh, we yeah. need to T- cover some other stuff as well, right? Yeah, the re- the whole wrestling thing. Yeah, yeah. Back to that. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, uh, been. Over in the UK, we haven't had homecoming yet, but uh, as we've exclusively revealed on the show just before we dialed in, uh, and you know all about this as well, Ortiz, the UK premiere, and actually the worldwide premiere on free-to-air TV is happening this Sunday, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. At uh, 9 p.m.? 
is, I think. That's right. It is, uh, yeah, 9 p.m. Yeah. It's Sunday on Fight Network UK. So that's Channel yep, 192 yep. on Sky for our listeners. But can I first of all say congratulations, because I have actually seen the pay-per-view. And for me, for my money, and, and hopefully Carl will back me up, but oh, I yeah. thought yours was match of the night. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, we definitely went out there with the intention of uh, trying to have match of the night. And uh, a lot of people said it was. I mean, uh, kudos to everyone on the pay-per-view. Everybody put in a lot of work, which they always do. There's definitely a, a, a definitely a feeling backstage, especially when we do pay-per-views. Everyone is just going out there to try to put on the best match possible, and uh, it, it's great. And then just we we're very fortunate that uh, the, the fans and everybody considered our match out of everyone else's match to be the uh, the match of the night, which is awesome. And um, and, and it, it was kind of hard uh, not to to, to get that uh, match of the night um, nomination being in there with the Lucha Bros. They're, they're phenomenal talents. They're on, on another level. We, we wrestled them a few times before, and it was very fortunate that we did before we wrestled for the first time with them at our homecoming. So we kind of already built that chemistry with them, and, 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 it, and it showed. And just on that, I mean, without a doubt, your career, and uh, well, Alex, is, this incarnation of it in impact over the last couple of years, everything you've touched has, has just been phenomenal. And by the way, I, we don't say this to all our guests. I'm not just blowing smoke in your direction here. I genuinely believe this, but there's been three fantastic feuds that you've had, you know, with OVE, with, um, um, sorry, with the Lucha Brothers, and uh, also with the OGs. What, what's been your highlight? What, what do you think was the best feud that you've been in so far? Um, whew, that's, that, that's a good question. Um, I, I would have to say the OBE feud because that, the, the OBE feud is definitely what, uh, got us into the limelight. It got us into the spotlight. Um, we were in there, we, we had the opportunity to, to work with people that, you know, that we were cool with, that we built a relationship with over doing indie wrestling. And then for us to get on a bigger stage and do it for impact, it was great. And, uh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, we, we had some really rough matches as you know, with OVE and, uh, I, I wouldn't want to do those type of matches with anyone else other than those guys, to be honest, like the Bob Warren Basco match. I whew, never in a million years, I thought I'd ever be in a match like that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, to, to be in there with, with, with those guys, with, uh, people that we consider friends and people that we, we trust, uh, a trust. And, uh, yeah, that that I have to give that to OV for me, in my opinion. I don't know what Santana would pick. <laughs> Now, just on that note, uh, you said about the danger of the Barb uh, Wire Massacre match. I was more worried for you at the, during Bound for Glory during those loose boards on the Concrete Jungle match. <laughs> that scared yeah, the living man. bejesus out of me, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you and I both. Uh, we, uh, uh, just a little insight on that. So we, we never worked out anything. It was just the, the guys that set up the ring, they really tried their best. I, I have to give it to them. They tried their best for those boards not to, to pop out of place. But because of them trying so hard, trying to strap everything so tight, to, tight together, at the very beginning, in the entrance, the middle board popped out, and that was it. Game over. It, was, it wasn't going back in. So then it became like wrestling on J- Jenga blocks. And you were there, Kyle. It was really you? scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was in the second row for the show, and uh, when you guys were doing the entrance, everyone was jumping up and down, and, like, me and my buddy yeah. Cody looked at each other like, I, I don't know if that's a great idea before the match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got to ask you, though, man, uh, how did you guys link up with Bodega Bams? How did you pull that one off? Because all of us in the crowd, we were shocked. Did not see that one coming. <laughs> um, I very fortunate, uh, Santana... Uh, uh, they started messaging each other back and forth on, um, on Instagram. Uh, just Bodega is all about the Latino movement. And that's pretty much what he's, what we're doing, uh, in wrestling. He's pretty much doing that with the hip hop world and trying to do it into pop culture. He wants to, to make it cool to be Puerto Rican, Dominican, to be Latino. And, uh, he just got that vibe. He saw what we were doing. And, uh, yeah, uh, Santana ended up going to one of his shows in New York and they just hit it off and became friends. And then I met him and everything. They're just the tan boys, bodega. They're just cool, really cool dudes, humble dudes. And they're wrestling fans. So, I mean, instantly <laughs> there was a connection there. They're all, they all grew up to be wrestling fans. Bodega's son 
uh, they love wrestling. And it was just, it was just, uh, 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 it, it couldn't ask for a better situation. It just, it was very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, man, I'm lost on train of thought. I was going to come up with the incredibly wanky term. There's a synergy. <laughs> but, yes. Okay. Yeah. Synergy. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, is there term. any chance? Is there any chance at all that we could get like an LAX theme remix or a new LAX theme with the Bodega Bams verse on it? I mean, come on. Oh, oh, we, 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 we've been talking about it. So maybe, hopefully. I mean, uh, I, I you, agree. you guys always That'd bring out cool. the big pun flag. I'm hoping for Chris Rivers on that one, too. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. Yeah, man, you don't even know. Of course. Bringing the big pun flag out. It was just awesome. Was not expecting it at all. Yeah, uh, we were fortunate enough at a, uh, we were at an indie show. We were at House of Glory. And um, there was a fan that, that brought that flag. And as soon as Santana saw it, he was like, how much money do you want for this? I was like, whatever <laughs> you want. I'll get, I, I want that flag. And like, it took some convincing, but the, the, the fan was fortunate enough. We, we hooked him up with some merch. We, we did a bunch of stuff. He was really cool about Gave it. Gave him a couple chopped first, cheeses. He didn't want to give up the flag. Say that again? Gave him a couple chopped cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, but, I'm really disappointed uh, yeah. there, Ortiz. You said, how much money do you want for it? I thought you just used the word paper all the time. Uh, using uh, the word paper, money. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. paper money. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a, a bit of a controversial question here because, you know, I, I've talked about how much I like you to, you know, when you're in the ring, those kind of things. But I noticed uh, about six months ago that you personally within the tag team changed uh, your role within it. You used to be very, very Ooh. quiet and it used to talk very much. But in the last uh, maybe three, four months, the tail end of the... Um, of the OGs feud, you, you really came into your own. You started talking more on screen. Was that something that, that you lobbied for or, or was that something that just came about naturally? Uh, I think naturally and also, uh, uh, being pushed to kind of now it's time. You know what I mean? When we were, it, when we first came in, it was very much, as you mentioned, it was very much just Conan talking for both of us. Um, but Santana would be a little bit more vocal. For me, more so coming off the indies, I have a very uh, completely different character than I do on on air that you will see as Ortiz. I'm I'm very um, uh, I have a very flamboyant character. I mean, I go as the funky monkey. So uh, uh, when I was put into the LAX, uh, um, when we were put into LAX, I was just like, oh, I need to be more serious, and that kind of got me to be a little bit more reserved and quiet. Uh, and then I was just pretty much trying to find my footing in the gimmick. But now, as you said, uh, I, I, in the last three or four months, I've just kind of been trying to find a way to be the funky monkey, but at the same time, be Ortiz. You get me? Well, I'm you made it your own. To find the you made, totally made it yeah, your own. Exactly. You took the original exactly. blueprint of the LAX characters, the original incarnation, but you were still were able to blend your personalities from your previous work into it. I mean, I, I love the current incarnation of LAX. I mean, not just blowing smoke up your ass, but I would say it's the best uh, LAX has ever been, personally. And for me, too, as well. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, so, that so, means a lot. Thank you. So, so you obviously, you know, your, your character's evolving from, from what you thought it should be to what you want it to be. So, so what's next mm -hmm. for you guys? Because let's face it, you've faced the top three tag teams in the business. Uh, well, in the business, in, in impact, certainly. And most probably the business, uh, with, with a few exceptions. So uh, what, what does the long-term future look like for you? Can we see the split? And if we do, out of your own mouth, who's the Genetti of the group between you and Santana? <laughs> um... Mm, hmm. Well, I, man, I'll be Janetti all day. Janetti was like, if it, it, it was more so Janetti's uh, actual life that kind of he went down the deep end. You know what I mean? But in the ring, man, very few people could touch Marty Janetti. He was flawless. He had flawless footwork, flawless timing. So, man, I, I'll take Janetti all day. Santana could be Michaels. That's cool. He can put me through the barbershop window. I'm all right with it. <laughs> so it's like Janetti is like your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, pretty much. Yeah, man. Janetti was nasty, man. It still is. Janetti's the man. I, I, I'll take part of Janetti. No doubt. <laughs> so uh, 
yeah, so we are moving to Pursuit this week. I think we've got to mention that as well, because this is going to go out before the debut episode on Pursuit. So uh, new time slot. It's obviously going to be on Twitch as well. But have has managed? I know management were talking to you the other day. You know, according to all the dirt sheets, those kind of things. But what about the the creative side of things? Is it getting more edgier? Because I mean, you've always been involved in the edgy stuff on, on Impact. You know, yours has always been more adult orientated. Your storylines. But uh, mm-hmm. what do you what, what can we expect to see from uh, Impact on Pursuit? Well, the, the biggest thing um, we were actually we we had a, a meeting. Uh, all the everybody in Impact. Uh, and the, the biggest thing is, uh, they have a, uh, Anthem has a stake in pursuit versus if they went to another network, they would have to deal with a lot of, uh, restrictions. So being that, uh, uh, Anthem has a bigger stake in pursuit, we, we, we have a lot more freedom. You, you know what I mean? We don't have to like answer to a third party company or whatever. And, um, hopefully that, that shows and reflects, uh, I mean, we've only done, we filmed one episode so far for the uh, Pursuit channel. And then when we go down to Mexico, we'll film, the, uh, we'll film more stuff for it. But uh, uh, yeah, that just it, it just gives us more creative freedom as a whole, as a company. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you only because we've done one episode so far, how, how much edgier it's going to get. But uh, I mean, like you said, uh, uh, we've, we've, we've been a part of all the really edgy and crazy stuff like uh, – Richie getting hit by the car. How's Richie doing? I was um, about to ask you that, bro. How's Richie doing? Full full recovery, man. He's great. (laughs) Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely, uh, 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 the powers that be at Impact, they're trying to, they're trying to do uh, something. They're trying to, we're we're trying to be the alternative, as you can see. uh, And, yeah. And, And that comes off every time we do tapings. And, uh, we'll, we'll see exactly what we can get away with and how far we can go. But uh, you know for sure, for sure, LAX will be right there, right at the line, always. Excellent. So so I've got to ask the question because the, the same time that you've been doing the tapings, they finished. Did you get a call from, um, where was it? Uh, somewhere in Florida, where was it? Uh, All Elite Wrestling. Did they approach you? <laughs> and I, I, you don't have to tell me if you're going because you'll break my heart if you are, but did they give you a call? <laughs> no sir we are uh, uh, we we are strictly just impact wrestling all day baby no sir <laughs> good to hear that, that right there, the right impact fans, lax is impact <laughs> yeah yes sir fair enough well we've only got a few minutes left so kyle um I'll, I'll let you finish off with a couple of quick fire ones if you've got anything for for our, for our main man here yeah, yeah. I mean, you know me. I'm going to totally throw it in the left field here. Uh, Ortiz, I was wondering, at the pay-per-view this past uh, week here, uh, during your entrance at the pay-per-view, you came out with a, a WCW NWO revenge hat. I'm an N64 mark, so like I spotted that hat miles away. I got to know, where did you get that hat from? I've never seen that before. Well, this this is if you on Instagram, his Instagram is stash pages, and I got it from him. I I, I was working it in the show, <clears throat> and he uh, he actually gave one to me in Santana. And then I'm I'm such a video game nerd, uh, just like you, and um, I just was just such a huge. I love No Mercy, I love W Stone versus, and then when I got that hat, I was like, oh, I'm wearing this everywhere. And uh, yeah, man, I, I was very fortunate. But stash pages. If you go on his Instagram, he has a link to his website, and I, I'm pretty sure he has them available in Scully form and all that good stuff. But yeah, I, I was very fortunate uh, uh, to, to get it uh, gifted upon me. Yeah. I hope he's got some more in stock because I got to get me one of those. I got to swagger jack you for that. <laughs> nice. Just to, unless you've got another question, I've got one final question for for Mr. Ortiz here. Uh, have you got anything before I ask it? No, no, wrap it up. Let this man go. Let him go home. Let, let him go home. Okay. <laughs> well, on that then, let, let's create some cont- controversy before we finish up then. Obviously, LAX, you're the current car- incarnation. And there's been, you know, a lot of people in, in the group as time has gone by. You know, we, we rated you as, as, as the best version of LAX. Where do you rate yourself? As far as the version of LAX, yeah, I mean, I mean, 
when people when historians come back in the year 3000 and they dig up the archives and they and they talk about LAX who are they going to be talking about is it going to be you and Santana is it, is it going to be uh the OGs Machete <laughs> oh, Machete <laughs> <laughs> well without without Homicide in Hernandez's original run as LAX uh, after they got to the Machete and uh, and all the other stuff but once once it was Homicide and Hernandez and, and they took off, their, their run was phenomenal. And uh, 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 growing up, for us, we were fans of the original LAX. So then when we got the call years later to be the new version of LAX, we were, we were ecstatic, man. We, we were just 60-year-old kids inside just being like, well, this is awesome. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I, I, for, for me, I, I'm being biased. For me being a fan, I would have to move out with Homicide and Hernandez, man. Uh, of course, they're, they're, they're the originators. They're, they're the, what made the gimmicks, gimmicks so popular. And it, it was fortunate enough that years later we were able that, to come back because of the body of work that they put in. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely the uh, Homicide and Hernandez. Just by the way, who made Conan. that call to you, by the way? Was it, was it Conan? I'd like to think it was Conan who called you. I know it wasn't, but who called you to, to say you're the new <laughs> Oh, it was it, it, it was uh, Jerry Borash when he was still in, but Conan did call us. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was J- J- JB, Jeremy Borash, and uh, Conan. They 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 were the two. Uh, Conan actually called Santana on the phone. Like we, it, it, it was we we never talked to him ever. We never met him. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, just like Santana got a call, and it's like, hey, what's up? It's K Dog. And we were like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we go, Ortiz, I want to ask you one final question. Now, Impact Wrestling is what we specialize here in our podcasting circuit. Where we are for the Impact fans. And Impact Wrestling is your yard, I think we could say at this point. You you basically, as far as tag teams go, run Impact Wrestling from uh, – OVE to Decay to everybody you face, the OGs. Is there anybody outside of Impact Wrestling, any like young up and comers or anybody that you would like to see maybe come into Impact in 2019 to face you guys? Any competition you've got your eyes on anywhere in the professional wrestling circuit? Just before you answer that, by the way. Just for your answer, I saw yeah. you in Manchester versus uh, Jody Fleisch and I can't remember who it is. You can't call them young youngsters because that they're they're both about ninety. <laughs> but that was an amazing match, by the way. That was fantastic. But carry on. That's Cheers. Bad thing. Cheers. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you brought them up. Uh, uh, we're trying to make that match happen at Impact, and we we love to to have a series of matches with uh, Jody and Johnny. That, that that would be great, man. Um, uh, the rascals now they're, they're getting established an impact. So, I mean, we, we, we uh, again, the people that we develop a relationship with on the Indies and just years of doing it, the rascals, w- w- when it's finally said and done, you know what I mean? Maybe after we go at it with the Lucha bros, who knows? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, rascals better lock the door on that hot box cipher. You never know when LAX is going to kick down. <laughs> Uh, I, I was going to ask you to just drop it to KM and Falabar for a week because we love them. But uh, <laughs> if you can just drop it for a week, just for a week, you know, then take it back. We'll be all right with that. Yeah. Bah, bah. Hell yeah, man. The panda. Um, man. Uh, man, uh, you know what? I, I would have to say uh, 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 Kazarian and um, Christopher Daniels. Or uh, SCU, that that would be awesome. That, we uh, we met him on the cruise, and then if it, if uh, if there could be something that happens, man, like I said, Chris Renee is my favorite wrestler. So I mean, if we can make that happen in some way, I, I, you know, Impact is open to work with different companies. That that would be awesome. They're not the uh, the younger guys coming up. But, uh, yeah, definitely I would have to go with that tag team. Oh, no, we've, Take- we've been personally pushing for that match for months on our social media pages. I think all the Impact fans, it's just natural. I mean, you guys have said so many times, yeah. those guys are your, like almost your heroes that you look up to. That's the match we yes. need, the addiction versus LAX. I'm for it. Impact fans, loungers, tribe members, you heard it from here. Tag, Take tag, my- everybody needs to be tagged. Let Take them know. My Take, yeah. right Take, Take my money right now. Take the social media. We want to see it this year. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. Well, we, we've outstayed our welcome, Ortiz. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on tonight. And and obviously, uh, for our listeners, if you want to check out uh, the homecoming pay per view, it's on uh, Sky on the UK Fight Network this Sunday. And and obviously. Uh, you're debuting on pursuit so in the states make sure to check out the debut this week but all it leaves me to do is is to say thank you and i'm sure carl will say thank you as well but as i said it's been a pleasure you've been coming on and uh, we'll love to get you back on anytime you like for sure guys i'm more, more than willing to do it thank you and uh watch homecoming and uh, what we do with the that's that's only the beginning that's just a taste we have a lot more to give with them so cheers take care guys yeah, i'll, I'll catch you at the bodega bro <laughs> sounds good bro Peace. worldwide latino pride the ambassadors of violence lax k Dog, the notorious 187 homicide and homie, stop fucking through I'm from Miami, not counting. Down with the essays in the 6 4 hopping. To my body, was in the 787, and those up in Brooklyn pulling too.